Welcome to the Wasting Time Podcast. I'm here with Chris. Good afternoon, Chris. Good afternoon, Nick. Nick's just been giving me a tour of his brand new house that he's moved into. Yes, settled in, which is nice. Um, took a took a good week or so, but but we got there. And we feel a lot more settled now, so it's nice. Sun yeah. shining. I'm a stone's throw away from the beach, so gonna take the dog for a walk down there after this. So Lovely. that's cool. Yeah, I can assure the listener, having seen it, it's a very nice place. I'm a little jealous myself. Um, well, you're just gonna you're gonna have to look at that move up north, aren't you? Really, if you want to. <laughs> Money doesn't buy you much in in the centre of London, right? No, that's true. That's true. Um, I mean, yeah. could you even get a house like a flat for like a couple of hundred grand in London? Mm, I think I think you'd struggle to be honest. Like even yeah. like a studio, it's maybe mad, a studio. Yeah, a studio. But but prices have have dramatically fallen on flats recently. Um, right. Yeah, as I I had I had mine valued last week, and as I found, but I'll uh, oh, really? <laughs> I'll tell I'll tell you about that. Um, not on the podcast sometime, um, but yeah, I'll not go into that. But it is what it it is what it is. Difficult times we're living in. Yes, although some better times ahead. Starting to see some people now. You're going to see your parents this weekend, right? Some family. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Since la- the first time since last summer, so really looking forward to that. I guess. Starting to see like, sh- like tour proper tour big tours being booked now as yeah, well. Yeah, man. Yeah, I yeah. Saw that newfound Gloria doing a big mammoth tour with Simple Plan. Yeah, that was obviously originally scheduled it was a for risk, last risk summer, scheduled, and, and yeah. they've got the new dates for that. Yeah, not yeah, long until your um, stag do either. That's um, yeah, that's true. Still, uh, hopefully that that all goes ahead. Yeah, although I have heard we are struggling to. Oh, book places for like 20 odd 30 odd people uh, so I'd say that's yeah, been a bit of a too. challenge so we may just end yeah. up in a park right well as long as I get to see you all it's that, well there you that's go that's what it's all about right yeah 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 exactly well given yeah. given I've been move, moving house I haven't really done much in the way of um research or listen to much although I mean that's a bit, probably a bit of a poor excuse because Moving house and yeah, unpacking boxes. I probably could have. It's probably the of, good, yeah, the yeah. Good it's a good opportunity, opportunity just, just to stick some tunes on an on, album right? you don't really know and 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 uh, l- listen to some new stuff. So, so yeah, I suppose, I suppose, bit of a letdown there, Nick. But well, you know. what 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 have you got that's been on your radar anyway? In terms of new stuff, there was a new song by. Girlfriends featuring uh, a guy called Josiah. I don't, know, I don't know how he says his name. I think that's right. That's a bit bit of a tune. Very much in the girlfriends kind of vein. Um, really enjoyed the song by Point North. The new Point North song. Nice now. That's a that's a good little pop punk jam in the sort of you know sort of Machine Gun Kelly sort of vein. Uh, very catchy though. Um, what else have we got? I saw Hot Mulligan had a new song and they, they very, uh, intelligently called it featuring Mark Hoppus. Like, cause you see that and you think, Oh, he's on their song, but that's just the title of the track, which just is a marketing uh, ploy. Yeah. Not quite sly, but nicely done. Um, what else has there been? New bleachers oh. track you sent me. Oh yeah. 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 What did you think of that? that? Yeah, I enjoyed it, but it definitely sounds like something else. Sounds like a rip-off of something, but I can't put my <laughs> finger on. Yeah, like, someone else said that. Like it's a, it, to me, it sounds like uh, their other song, I Want to Get Better. So it's like, I Want to Get Better Part 2. I, I feel like it is a bit. Um, there's that Kenny Hoopla song. That's going back a, two or three weeks now. The the uh, Hollywood Sucks. I love uh, you know, I really like that one. Yeah, he's got... Got a great voice. Really like his voice. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's super catchy. Um, I, uh, this isn't new, but I've been listening to Jay Jackson's album from 2019 because um, I'm supposed to have her on the show soon. Um, that's really good. You can really feel the Mike Ness production on that. Um, so I'd recommend that. 
Oh, there's. I don't know how new this is. I'm looking it up now. Oh, the start of May, so relatively new. But do you know a band called Dangers of Love? They're a no. London-based band. Uh, I know it has Joe from Apologies and Giles from Great Cynics in it, and then there's a couple of guys from other bands. Um, but they're really good. Been listening to their new song Gloria. I'd recommend you check that out. I think you'd like that. Okay, give it a listen. Yeah, I think I think that's it for the for the highlights for me recently. Any shows lined up? Like not anything. Not, that's not, it, nothing anything that, that I've booked yet. Mm. Just waiting to no, see. No, no, yeah, just waiting to see if things happen and stuff. Really. What about you? Yeah, same. Yeah, not in any rush to get back to a crowded venue. Really, yeah, just yeah, yeah. Out, an outdoor venue, maybe. Um, see what yeah, pops up yeah, up here. Maybe Slam Dunk. Like, if there's, you know, something going on for Slam Dunk. It's September now, that isn't it? It's September. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that. That's that's a possibility. I'm sure tickets won't be, you know, f- selling out for that with what's yeah, going exactly. on. So, yeah. you I'm know, sure you something get a lot of reluctant people still. Yeah, something you can maybe jump on board later. Yeah, involved. yeah, I could possibly be down for that. Yeah, cool. What about the Love Breakers? Any any news with the Love, love Breakers? Now you are uh, there um, <laughs> managing them. Yeah, just trying to you know like line up some shows and stuff, but obviously that's difficult at the minute. Um, but like really just gearing up to the album release. We'll give that little plug here, June twenty fifth, Primary Colors. We've talked about it on the podcast many times. Yeah, what another three, three or four weeks. Uh, yeah, yeah, about that. They, they've got, they, 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 at the time of recording, they filmed a video just, what, about four or five days ago. So that'll be coming out soon. So, what track's that for? It's for the title track, Primary Colors. Oh, okay, cool. No, I like that. So like that's that kind of like the final single from the album, I suppose. So, cool. uh, yeah, so yeah, we'll be giving that a push when that's out. Well, maybe we could get them on for a little 10, 15 minute, um, release chat yeah that's that's a cool idea i certainly wouldn't object to that i'm sure they i'm sure they'd love to as well that could be fun all right so should we get into today's interview so we interviewed steve from belvedere um been around for a for a long long time mm-hmm. um played with some pretty incredible bands done a lot of touring over the years brought a new record out um which is out now, I think. It will be out now. Yeah, right, Chris? it came, it came yeah, out last week. On, I think, yeah, it was May, at the end of the first week of May. So when we spoke to him, it had been out for two days, I think. No, no, tell a lie. We spoke to him just before it came out, as you'll, as you'll hear from our chat. It's because it came out on the 14th, that, that was it. He was very kind enough Hi. to give us a little preview of the record. Yeah, yeah. Advance. But yeah, go listen to it. Go check it out. Um, but here's our chat. Steve, man, thank, thanks for doing this, by the way. Sorry, I haven't, haven't said that yet. Thanks for giving thanks us for having me. your time. Um, what well, are you, you over in, Al- are you in Alberta? Yeah. Yeah. I'm in Calgary. So I'm, uh, it's 10 30 in the morning here. Okay. Nice. Nice. How's your weekend so far? It's good. It's been a little dreary, actually. We had some pretty nice weather there earlier on in the week, but now it's raining and it's three degrees. So there's been snow, like little bits of like snow throughout the day, too, which is, not super unusual, but not welcome in May. So, <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what's what's the situation in kind of Calgary and I guess Canada in, in general at the moment with um, as far as kind of pandemic goes? Um, yeah, we're not doing too good as far as Alberta goes, and Canada's not doing super great. But I mean, they've been they've been vaccinating people pretty regularly here, and it's really ramped up over the last little while. Uh, where I'm in Alberta, um, we've got one of the worst cases uh per whatever metric they use in the world which is no good so they've kind of shut some things down um and we'll see how it goes cool well not very cool actually (laughs) no not cool at all really yes but i guess we we haven't really we haven't locked down here like right we haven't had a real lockdown so you know they basically what this means is they just kind of like closed restaurants for you know other than pickup and stuff but you know 
Um, there's been some restrictions that we've had before, but it's not like they're telling everybody to stay in their house and stuff. So, uh, we're, you know, which, um, depending on what your thoughts are on that, that might be a good idea just to sort of get things a little more reasonable here, but I've had enough fighting with people about (laughs) what you should and shouldn't do. So I just, uh, let's just, I just want to talk about music. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, so so how? I mean, how did it affect you guys? Obviously, you're bringing out um, new record. I'm gonna check the name here first. Uh, hindsight is the sixth sense. Next week, next Friday, right? Yeah, for coming out Friday. Yeah, yeah um, that's right. Um, yeah, so I mean, it's um, we were supposed to do a hundred shows this past year. Um, mm-hmm. We were going to be quite busy, and so um, you know, silver lining to that is we started writing uh, a new record. And I'm really glad we did. Um, it turned out really well, and I'm proud of it. And I'm excited to get this thing going here next uh, next Friday. Yeah, cool. I should also say probably by the time we've released this for the listeners that it is out now. Technically, if you're listening yeah. to this, so, so go, and listen, uh, to it. Yeah. Go, go and listen to it. Um, so, so you said you had like a uh, hundred shows booked. I mean, where where were you heading out to? I mean, we had three. We had three UK and Europe tours set. Um, we were going to be on Manchester Punk Festival, Punk Rock Holiday, uh, Tells Bells, Resur- um, Resurrection Festival, Rebellion, uh, Brack Rock. There was, a, there was a whole long list of them that we were supposed to do. So we were coming over three times last year. And, right. uh, and then we had a bunch of stuff in Canada and then some stuff in Mexico. And, um, and then, of course, we, after that, we were going to start rolling into other things, Japan, South America, and, and maybe the U.S. So, um yeah, uh, obviously it's a bummer and we're trying to, you know, just, I've moved things a few times now and I'm hoping yeah. that uh, if everything goes well, that uh, maybe we'll be back in the UK um, by the end of this year or, you know, then, you know, next year, uh, next spring. Fingers okay. crossed, have you, yeah. Have you got kind of tentative plans for that, like potential yeah. tours lined up? Okay. Yeah, so we had, you know, we've had, like I say, three separate U- Europe, UK sort of, tours with support bands and so we've kind of taken those groups of dates and tried to put them together to t- kind of Got do you. a longer tour at the end of this year and of course we don't know like things are are not amazing as far as numbers go in europe either so we'll have to see what this all looks like uh, but we are going to take one more stab at it at the end of 2021 and if not then we're going to move a whole shit ton over to april and then june and then next summer as well so um okay. that's all you can do you know just kind of keep positive and you know not sweat it and just uh, just try to make the best out of things. Well, you have you'll have this new this new record to to play when on these upcoming tours at least. You know, yeah, you which is cool. You know, because our la- you know we were going to tour on a five year old record, so this was kind of right. Yeah, twenty sixteen. We really yeah, right. So you know, it's nice to have a new record, and 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 we're excited about that. So um, you know, try to look at, at the positives whenever we can. It looked like um, Manchester Punk Fest was trying, was trying to get something organised again for the next, I don't remember, next, next year or the year after. Um, Do you get an email yeah. about that the other day, Chris? Yeah, I did, yeah. Isn't yeah. It? I think they want to make it happen next year. We would you, we, we would you go, weren't we? We were going to go and um, interview, you know, a few bands face-to-face, which, which you know, we were really looking forward to. But that, that, yeah, came, I mean, that was really close, wasn't it? It was like April it was like when yeah, things was, really just yeah. shut shut down. Yeah, we were we were five days away from leaving for a Western Canada tour, and then about four weeks away from from flying over. So yeah, it, it definitely hit us at a bad time for sure, like it did a lot of people. So um, yeah, yeah, we're still trying to make those dates up. Cool. So I, I guess what we usually do with these things, we kind of do a little bit of a walk through the ages, really, um, mm. and kind of take things back to where where you started so i don't know if you can maybe um kind of go back to you know how you guys started i mean you've been you've been around quite a while now so Mm -hmm. um probably have to do a bit of a whistle top stop version of it but um yeah kind of how how do you guys get together and obviously i know you've changed a bit in terms of members but um Mm -hmm. yeah take us back to a bit of of the start really so I started the band in 1995. Um, we were a three piece then uh, with uh, some one was a guy that uh, one of the guys was somebody that I went to high school with and someone I met at a record store. He worked at a record store in Calgary. And we were just like, you know, like I say, it was a three piece. It was pretty simple music. Um, I didn't think I was going to really make much of it as far as a band goes because I had had a record label 
um, that I that I had for about eight years, and I put out 13 releases. It was called Hourglass Records. And as much as I love punk and playing playing it, I just uh, didn't think that I was going to be able to pull this off. So I, I thought I was going to be sort of like the guy putting out bands' records. Um, yeah. And then as time went on, I started. I remember we played our first show in 90, 96 and um, I was hooked. I, I think just a switch went off and you know before you knew it we were very quickly doing weekenders um all through college and and sort of going to the states and pretty shortly into 98 99 i just we just kind of went for it and uh and uh, yeah so um it kind of gradually you know built up over time and i we've been to about 40 countries and we've played probably over 1500 shows and played with some of my my heroes growing up in the in the genre there's not too many bands that we that you know I haven't crossed off the list yet so um I feel very fortunate to be able to still do this in my mid 40s and we're going on 26 years now who who so who were like a couple of those heroes that that you've played with one of the one of the early bands that we toured with was Bad Religion and that was in 99 and we did a Canadian tour with them and at that point they'd only really done mostly like Vancouver Toronto and Montreal and so this they actually did some other dates they they played um calgary and edmonton and winnipeg and so these were big shows for us you know that we're talking thousands of people every night and you're talking to a band that um that was used to playing in front of 50 people in a basement so um that was a big one and we we, we met strung out they were the main support on that tour nice and that was some earlier on you know early on we kind of that that kind of got us into to um uh, to playing with bands of that size and then you know we started uh, we got some dates on the warp tour and that turned into, you know, a lot of other tours as well. So, yeah. um, you know, after the bad religion tour, other than warp tour, we were doing a lot of just sort of headlining basement shows in front of 20 people in the U S for a lot of years, um, and built things up in Canada. And it was sort of, I remember we toured with the mad caddies and that was a really big one for us at the time. We did a Canada mm -hmm. with them and became really good friends with them. And we started doing some stuff in the States with them. But I remember when satanic surfers, uh, we got paired up with them across Canada and become became good buds and they actually brought us to to europe for the first time for for nine shows and then uh, from there we hooked up with uh, we, we jumped on a few shows in switzerland with no use for a name and pulley became good friends with both those bands ultimately came back a year and a bit later with pulley and did a full uh tour with pulley um but yeah it was satanic surfers that kind of kicked things off for us overseas and then once we started coming okay. over to europe and then we went to japan it it really just kind of started um taking off, I guess, for the band and, and, um, and, you know, so those are some early, you know, kind of bands that we, we, you know, sort of clipped off the list there. Um, more recently we've done tours with Lagwagon and Pennywise and Comeback Kid. And, uh, those were, we did some dates with no effects and, and these are all, um, they're all really great tours to be on. Yeah. It's fat, fat Mike fun to spend time with. Yeah. Yeah. They're a lot of fun and like, you know, <laughs> it's crazy how big those shows are. Like, it's just, you know, it's still, you know, 20 some years later, I still really appreciate being able to do those dates. You know, I remember we did a, yeah. a little run with rise against in 2003, kind of when they were really building up. Uh, okay. Just those before were big it shows too, for them. You know? So, yeah. um, yeah, we seem to be, uh, very lucky that way. And, you know, certainly a lot of, a lot of hard work, but a lot of people that have thrown us some good spots. I mean, that, that first bad religion tour, obviously you said it was a bit of a, a kind of, things started to build momentum from there how did that that initial tour kind of come together how did you end up on that bill so in 98 warp tour they uh two of the guys uh bobby and and jay bentley they did uh they had this sort of pirate radio station and they had it with this local dj from la i think and um they went around and collected collected demos from bands all over the warp tour and it was probably hundreds or thousands of them and i I gave them our first record in Vancouver and three months later I get a call and I thought it was somebody pranking me. Like it was Jay right. Bentley on the phone with, with the, and I recognized the DJ's voice as well. And it all just can't, you know, you kind of get that, like you're floating over yourself kind of feeling. And they said, Hey, we're doing this Canada tour. You guys won this contest. Do you want to, do you want to come do this tour? And obviously we said, yeah, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> yeah. And then we found out Strung Out was on it. It was just like, yes, like it's just, you know, it just got better. Nice. Cool. Is there any, any one of those tours from back in the day that, I mean, which one, which one, if you had to pick one now that you could go back and do again and say, I mean, which one, which one would it be? 
Is that too, too difficult? It's it's hard because we have done a lot of really great tours. I'll say that there was a tour with the Mad Caddies in Europe and the UK in 2004, I think it was. And Thrill Rag was also on that. And we did, I think, 35 or 36 dates. Like we really did a, a good size tour. And you have to remember that like every at that time, you know, all those shows were so like we, we did the Astoria in, in London. It was, you know, there was a lot of big shows, you know but a lot of really great shows and it, they're just so much fun to tour with and play with. And I, and I just love those guys and what they've done um, yeah. for our band, but also just, you know, they're just so much fun to hang out with, but <clears throat> yeah, that, I would say that tour is probably the most memorable. Man, I missed the Astoria. That was a great venue. Yeah. That was my only time I've ever played there. We usually play the garage or the, uh, or we were playing underworld at the time. Uh, okay. Both, both cool venues as well, to be fair. But yeah. Obviously not on, yeah. not on the scale the Astoria was. But even even more recently, like we just did a tour with uh, Pennywise and Comeback Kid in South America, and they were, I mean, they're huge, huge shows. Um, we did, I mean, Lagwagon is still one of my favorite bands, and we did South America with them uh, a couple of years ago, and that uh, with Mute and Adrenalized, and that was a killer tour as well. Oh, so, that's amazing. Yeah, we, even yeah, recently, yeah. we've had some some great tours. Yeah, like South America is like a, a big market, like one doesn't necessarily always think about for for punk rock music, but. I, well, you know, I know yeah, there's a big I mean, following there. like, yeah, right across the board, South America is, is awesome for shows. Um, yeah. not, it, it is a little logistically a little more, it's a little tough, to, tougher to get there. You know, there's a lot yeah. of expenses. It is expensive to tour there. But okay. the, when you go, the people are amazing. And like Brazil, there's a lot of people in Brazil and, and there's a lot of people that love punk rock music. Um, but not just Brazil, you know, I remember we toured Venezuela in 04. Really? And not many bands have toured Venezuela, and that was a crazy right. show. We we just we just did this huge festival in Medellin, Colombia, and it was probably the biggest show we've ever played. <laughs> That's um, incredible. Yeah, I remember watching um, the is it the punk rock passport, the No Effects yeah. documentary. Yeah, I was, I was just and I remember gonna watching, say the exact same yeah, thing. watching yeah. like um, their South America shows, and they looked mental, like totally yeah. nuts. Yeah. We had just recently gone to Chile. We were we meant to we were meant to go there in '04 and 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 it canceled and um and then we 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 did go a couple of times with the Pennywise and and Lagwagon, and those mm-hmm. were some of the biggest shows as well. And it we didn't know we even had any fans there, and we like it felt like you know there was a lot of love there. And you know Peru's great, um, Argentina. I love Buenos Aires. You know there's lots of lots of good spots down there, and it it feels different because you know I've been to Europe probably close to 20 times and it's okay. amazing every time i go but it's just a different kind of pl- you know it's a different kind of thing it's always exciting yeah. when you haven't been to a place you know before and so uh it, it's very special so uh, i guess uk wise then how many i mean how many times you've been over here too many times to 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 remember maybe i would say between belvedere and this is a standoff probably 15 probably 15 okay. times maybe cool. maybe more because i know we did some just we did one just uk tour with captain everything um oh yeah i think that was an 04 and that was we didn't even go to europe on that time that was just the uk so i know we've been there we've been there a lot yeah yeah didn't sure. you didn't you have some love from the household name um yeah they kind of thing, yeah. they they really kind of got us going over there actually they lil and right, Catherine were right. awesome they, they put yeah. out to us Helsed, former child and and um and so we really kind of put a lot of effort into you know, touring the UK more. I know a lot of bands kind of sometimes go in there and play three, four shows and leave. We, we spent three weeks there with captain everything. Um, and even when we were just going there, it was very rare that we went there less than a week. Like we really tried to, to hit a lot of towns that, you know, not just London and Manchester, you know, it was sure, like, we, we sure. tried to, you know, we played Hartley pool. We played, <laughs> you know, we were up, in, <laughs> we were up in Scotland for three days. We were, you know, we, we, we didn't just play Cardiff. We played bridge end. Like we, you know what I mean? So it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. we definitely um, tried to play as much as, as we could. And I still, when we go back there now, it's the same thing. I don't want to spend three days in the UK. I want to go there for, you know, seven, 10 days. Uh, at least a few times to try and hit, you know, some of these smaller towns where we have fans, but maybe they don't want to make the trip to London and, you know, everything sure. that goes along with that. That's very cool. Are there, are there any kind of spots in particular that, that you're fond of in the UK, having having been to all these places? I would say that Manchester time? really got us early. <laughs> you okay. know, we, we played a lot of shows in front of nobody in the in the beginning in the uk but i felt yeah. like manchester had a good scene around it keep in mind this was 2001 or 2002 um okay. and it's been yeah. great for us ever since i love 
going to Wales. I love playing sort of Cardiff Bridge End area. Uh, London is is awesome. Even like you know going down to Brighton or Hastings or out to the west of Plymouth. There's always these little you know spots where you kind of go and it's like wow yeah. like maybe there's 50 people or 100 people but they're so excited and um, there's been some really nice surprises for sure. That's cool. Have you played like the Concord in Brighton presumably? Place. Yeah, a few times. Yeah, I was there yeah, with the Mad Caddies, yeah. I think was the last time. But I, th- I remember we played the Free Butt, I think, once as well. Oh, the Free Butt. Yeah, nice. Mm-hmm. I, I used to live there, hence, hence Did my you? knowledge yeah. of those venues. Yeah, yeah and so yeah. like I'm a booking agent, so I actually book a lot of bands. I book drones in the UK there and uh, a few other bands. Um, the company's called Merit Based Booking. And so I, I try okay. to get to know the venues. I'm not as in, you know, I, I don't have my ear to the ground as much as if I was from the UK, but I do my best from Canada. And so I book uh, quite a few bands in Europe and the UK as well as Canada and overseas. Uh, okay. How's that at the moment then in terms of, <laughs> well, probably a silly question, but in terms of being a booking agent, uh, in terms of like, uh, yeah, but uh, in terms of like, because you're seeing tours being booked again now and you're seeing bands release kind of dates. Like, what's the situation? Are, are like, just bands just jostling for any, uh, like, any venue that's available to get dates in? Like, how's how's it working at the moment in terms of, well, like, the, I like book, the future I book for about 30 different, I book in about 30 different countries. So it's, it can be, okay. every, every, every country's different, right? Yeah, right. So, right, yeah. you know, the UK is probably the furthest ahead right now in terms of being able to have shows. So you're, you, you are seeing locally there, you know, either full speed ahead or at least distant shows probably planned for the summer for July after Mm -hmm. some, it looks like some restrictions are going to kind of uh, ease up a little bit, I think in June there. And then in, you know, September, October, you're starting to see some full scale tours happen. Now, as far as Europe goes, um, it's a bit of a question mark, I would say. I think some people are, mm-hmm. are being pretty positive and, and, and we're, you know, you're trying to put some rooms on hold in hoping that, you know, it'll happen. In Canada, I think, you know, it's probably looking fall uh, or maybe later. In the States, they're already starting to have shows. So every country, it's, it's, it's difficult to just book a full Europe tour right now because as we get closer to that summer, fall, some might be able to happen and some might not. And and I don't know any better than you do. And that's another thing I think that people, the bands, they kind of say, well, what do you think? And it's like, you know, agents are kind of scratching their heads going, uh, like I'll put a room on hold for you, but that's about all I can do at this point. And the promoters are right. just been devastated. These venues have been devastated. So, you know, nobody wants to stick their neck out. They want to kind of put the rooms on hold. So you know that you have them, but as far as announcing stuff, it's, it's going to, trickle out i think but presumably when these when these countries and these places do open again like isn't there isn't the expectation that everyone's going to get to try and get into them at the same time rather than you know your normal kind of you know your your bands would tour throughout the year and have their off time and what have you yeah Um, it's just going to be be backlogs at venues to you know to get into venues and stuff right yeah, and I think that's why, like in you know, in some of the bigger cities in Alberta or in in Canada, like where you book maybe five or six months, I'm booking fourteen months. So, right. um, it does get you know to that point where, as a booking agent, you your your biggest fear is making sure you have a room, because when the doors do fly open, if you don't have that room, well, then now it's your fault. <laughs> right. Which. It isn't really because there's like who can predict this stuff, right? But all you can do is just try to like adjust and, and do what you can. So I do have that small fear that like the, the doors are going to get swung open worldwide and I'm going to have to reschedule 300 shows in a week. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh. I booked 20 bands, so it is um, it is in the back of my mind for sure. Yeah, I'm, I was just going to say, I mean, we talked about it with other guests in terms of like when that does happen though, you would really hope um and kind of anticipate a huge appetite for like live music again probably you know more so than yeah. than there has been kind of before this all happened you know well that's what we're all hoping you know and there's a and i think as a band this is how i look at it as, as somebody who sort of wears a few different hats in the music industry i i think it's best right now to not have big expectations i think you know i my hope is that that's what happens but also um again, every country is different, you know, like there's a lot of people that have been devastated financially from this. And I can't expect people that are just trying to eat to have expendable income to go to a show and buy a t-shirt. So 
yeah, I hope so. But at the same time, I'm very understanding that like not everybody has the same situation. Um, all I can focus on right now is, is getting the bands ready to go. And for me personally, I just want to be able to play music. I want to be able to see people. Yeah. I want to be able to talk to them again. I want to be able to, I mean, that's for me, that's almost more important to me than the music is, is the, the ability to go out and travel around the world and meet people and see your friends. Cause most of my friends don't live in my city. So, you know, you, they're the people that you get sure. used to seeing once a year yeah. in Europe and, and it, it's a real bummer to not have that connection. So I'm really looking forward to that. Just playing, you know, giving some of my buds a big hug and <laughs> probably a little yeah. extra than normal, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I really do miss a lot of people. Nice. Um, do you, so you say you book like 20 bands or whatever, are they kind of like based all over the world or are they kind of mainly yeah. Canadian? What's, or are they, they just all over the place? I actually only have a few Canadian bands, uh, Belvedere, okay. Wolfric, Downway. Um, and then, uh, I have a lot of American bands and then I have a lot of bands from Europe and the UK. So if you go on to merit, but merit based booking.com, uh, you can see the list there. And so some of the, uh, you know, I've got bands like cigar and much the same, um, where I book them pretty much everywhere. You know, maybe some of the bands I don't book in the States cause they have sort of a dedicated booking agent down there. Um, yeah. and then, you know, bands like satanic surfers and no fun at all. I book them just in Canada where they have, you know, agencies in Europe and the UK. <clears throat> so it does, it uh, does okay. sort of waver a bit, but yeah, yeah. I have a lot of bands from, from Europe and the UK. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm just looking now. I can see one of your, your favorites. Useless ID is on the list there. Nick. Oh yeah. 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 It'd be, good, be great to see them again at some point. Um, they're a great live. Yeah. I love, love seeing those. They're guys. great. We, we actually, we did Japan with them. The very first time we went to Japan, we went with them and the Vandals. And so we got to know them, you know, pretty well and lost touch with them for a little bit but we just did some dates with no effects a few years ago and they were on those dates and i'd seen them at festivals when belvedere this is a standoff had toured over there and it yeah. just worked out like you know we know each other they trust me and and uh, it's uh, it's wonderful to have useless id on the on the roster nice i, I see uh chaser on there as well which um yeah those guys yeah. are great yeah, Chris is basically yeah. interrogating your roster here. <laughs> Please, yeah, do. sorry. No, because here's the th here's the thing. I've done this before, where I start rattling off bands I book, and then I realize about ten bands in, I start forgetting bands, and then I go, "Oh no, I can't." You know, once you get to a halfway <laughs> point, you got to say them all, or you know, you're in trouble. So I just kind of throw a few out there, and then you can look at them and and. Yeah, I remember like my my old friend Dave Buck from Dying Scene. I don't know if you know him, like, cause he worked yeah. with Chaser, but he might, he must love your band as well. Like you're completely right up his street. I don't know if you've interacted Dying with Dying Scene, Scene much been, over the years. Good to us for sure over the years. Yeah. That doesn't shock me. Sorry, Nick. What were you going to say? I was just going to say, obviously you've got your booking agent stuff, Belvedere work. I mean, what, what other kind of pies do you have your hands in? Um, yeah, I do manage a few of the bands, La Armada and Wolfric. I, I sort of am their manager as well. I mean, it's okay. managing is kind of such a funny thing, right? Like it's ultimately, I don't take any money for it. And I just want to like help them push forward. You know, I, I book them. So I want to, you know, help them out with their record deals and distribution and things that I sort of know a little bit about. And that's, I mean, that advice goes across the board for all the bands. I mean, I don't really have yeah. a manager title. I just sort of call it management, but ultimately I, you know, I'm just trying to give them advice and save them a few of the mistakes because I've made a lot of them. Um, right. So that's that's where the love really comes in is I just want to see these bands do well. Um, sorry, jump, jumping ahead in the kind of, we're just obviously talking about the early days of your career, um, where, when Belvedere like kind of disbanded the first time or whatever. And, you, and obviously you've mentioned a few times uh, um, y y your other band. Um, is is that is that still a thing or, or since Belvedere have, have kind of taken the reins again, is that, you know, just kind of taken over? Um, uh, this is a standoff. Like, yeah, what's the, what's the deal with that? So it, this is a standoff ended in 2011 and yeah. there, and like no bad blood at all. Like, like one guy lives in Toronto, two guys are up in Edmonton. I'm here in Calgary. And so it just got to that point where we, it was just supposed to be a full, like sort of a fun side band and ended up like we were touring a ton and we were putting out records and, and uh, we were good with where we were with that. <clears throat> so at the end of 2011, that's when Belvedere kind of came back to just to do mm -hmm. some reunion shows. And again, it wasn't like much thought past the 10 or 12 shows we were going to do. But then as we kept playing and more shows came up, we put out the last record. So 
um, you know, I think this is a standoff came back. We did some stuff in, in, uh, in Europe and the UK and some Canada stuff, just some reunion stuff. And then we just re-released all our albums on vinyl and Mm -hmm. I, you know, who knows, who knows, maybe, maybe we'll start doing some stuff again as well. I've sort of learned to, to stop saying we're done yeah, because <laughs> right, I don't right. know if I'm ever done. And I don't, you know, I just think sometimes <laughs> you just need to take breaks from this stuff um, because I tend to do things a little too much all at once, you know? So, um, yeah. you know, doing 200 shows a year is a lot on people, especially over several years. And so I think I, you tend to burn yourself out a little bit. So I'm starting to take a different approach where it's more like, let's just like do things when it makes sense and uh you know i don't think i'm ever gonna say i'm done with any of this stuff now i think i'll just assume that everything's got a potential to fire up again at any time yeah yeah makes sense makes sense i mean is it are you so you say you're kind of you're you're coaching these new bands that you manage to kind of not make the same mistakes you know you made over the years i mean is that is that kind of what what that was about kind of doing too much to you know touring too hard yeah, I mean, I'm not going to say we're the only bands that that band that did this. There's a lot of bands that played th- that many shows, but I would say, you know, we weren't on the. We had some good tours, but we were doing a lot of that in front of nobody. You know, we were doing those two yeah. shows a year, and it was small basement shows in the states for years and years. And that's the kind of stuff I think that you you start to set yourself. You don't set yourself up for any kind of success when you kind of burn yourself out, you know, and right. I'm sure there's some tours that we didn't have to do that. We did anyways, just because we thought that's what we, that's what you do. Right. Right. Um, right. So that, that is a big lesson that I sort of tell bands is that, you know, you don't have to go out there and do 200 shows a year unless it makes sense, unless it's like doing opening up for bigger tours where you think it's actually going to accomplish something. So that's definitely lesson number one. And lesson number two is, is just watching, the deal you set forth with your band and, and these labels and publishers and everything else that people kind of get entangled in, because I've certainly uh, gotten us into some issues that, you know, we've eventually gotten ourselves out out of, but, you know, we've had a lot of really great labels along, along the, you know, along the years too. But, you know, I think, especially now the way things are with, with, music being online and sharing you're your best promoter and so it has to be a good collaboration with good labels with real distribution um before you start going well i'm going to jump in with these guys because we just need something i know a lot of small bands are desperate and and um and they just want to have something but you want to make sure that like you know three years from now you're not regretting that decision got you got you um i think uh should we Let's get into the new record a little bit. You know, I just want to ask you a little bit about that. Um, so, uh, your, your publicist Chris sent it to us. Um, so we've had the pleasure of enjoying it this week. Um, oh, good, the whole thing. I think, yeah, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Awesome. I, I, I think this the standouts for me. You know, not not that you asked or whatever, but um, I really like the opening track. And and there's yeah. one of the songs that I think you've put you've put out. Um, mm. It's track four on the album. I forget what it's called. Cam- camera something camera obscura <clears throat> yeah that's the one i love the chorus on that man it's it, it's really Thank cool you. so um yeah just like so who, who did you do the record with like what what were you kind of you know what's were you kind of wanting it to sound a little bit different from stuff you've done before like how, how did you approach it like what was what were the thoughts behind it well <clears throat> one of the biggest things too is that we we recorded this at our drummer studio echo bay studio where we we did the last record revenge of the fifth uh, we yeah. tracked it there, but we we mixed it at the blasting room. And this time we we wanted to just do the whole thing at, at Casey's studio. So Casey and I produced the record. Casey did okay. all the heavy lifting as far as the engineering. And um, yeah, we did it over over uh, just over a month. And um, it was nice because, you know, we had some timelines, but it wasn't that super crunch that you have when you sort of are dropping a bunch of money and going into another studio we were able to right there was some days where we could just go you know what i just i don't got it in me or you just you wanted to take it home for a few more you know days of listens before you sort of committed to whatever you know you wanted to do on it so i think it was good and i'm really pleased at at where it's at and i think casey did a great job and he's made some leaps and bounds as in my opinion as to to his recording techniques and I think he did a great job and I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. 
And what about from a from a writing perspective? Do I mean do you do most of the writing and bring that to the table, or no? Was it, was um, it all a bit, I, a bit I, collaborative? I, I do. I would say that, you know, lyrics and singing is pretty much 100% me, though Casey did write uh, the last song. Um, but music wise, I'm more of a collaborator. I like, you know, I, I there's a couple songs that I that I definitely came up with sort of the initial riffs and song structure. And I do a lot of the editing, you know, I sort of in terms of, you know, arrangements and changing things up because I want to be really happy with what finally comes out. But, you know, the other mm-hmm. guys, Dan and Ryan, who are new to the band, one of the reasons that they're in the band is not just because of them playing old Belvedere music was their ability to write. And okay. they were exceptional as far as, you know, being able to write with and had so many great ideas that, you know, it just became, which one are we going to go with? So everybody did a great job. Casey came up with a lot of great songs and uh, it, it felt like a real collaborative effort. That's cool. And I, I bet you're very much looking forward to getting out and playing those songs. Yeah. Well, and collaboration is a funny thing because, you know, our bass player, Ryan, lives in Toronto. And of course, with everything COVID this last year, trying to jam was was next to impossible, depending right. on the time of year. So there was a lot of sending ideas back and forth. And then yeah. we knew that we were, you know, we, we got most of the record to where we wanted to. But we knew that, you know, we needed some time in the studio to actually, you know, flesh out some of the ideas because we didn't have the jam time that we, we normally would have. Cool. So, so when you get out back on the road, obviously you're going to pay a good portion of that record. But um, mm-hmm. what's what's the rest of the show going to look like? You've got some time to ponder, kind of what what songs you're going to put on the set list, right? Yeah, I, I don't know what we're at. I think we're under a hundred songs to kind of choose from. So you have to right. um, you have to kind of think about that. I will probably play some of the record. I don't think we're going to play the whole thing. I think you know. We'll definitely play a good chunk of songs there, but you know, there's lots of songs off Fast Forty to the Tape and Revenge of the Fifth and Twas Hell and Angels that we still yeah, like of to course. play. So, um, you know, we probably won't play longer than an hour and twenty, hour and a half. So, you know, you do right. run out of time. So, yeah, I, I remember yeah. when, when we came when we came back in 2012, we we did 38 songs, and I remember in Toronto, and I think we played almost two hours, and I, you know, that's a long time. That's a long old set, yeah. A lot of energy. It's not like when you're sitting up there jamming away. Like we're jumping. It's you know we're engaged. Yeah, it's course. not like just sitting up there on a chair jamming away for two hours, right? So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah after an hour, it definitely feels like overtime. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Particularly with um, some of your technical, your music's quite technical as well. So it's kind of you know that's that that takes a lot. It reminds me of Nick. You know, we we so uh, Steve, we spoke to. Um, Sulin from Propagandi and they were mm-hmm. talking about like the first time they joined the band and just um how intense it was like to play for an hour and a half particularly that style of music you know which you know isn't obviously a million miles away from yours you know so you know yeah. that kind of makes sense she's been such a she's been such a great addition to that band I really enjoy their right. record well I mean incredible guitarist yeah, yeah yeah I mean you've had some new members over the years how does what what does that look like when you're bringing someone new in and they've got to like deal with you know your, your your fast pace kind of kind of stuff. I mean, if you you, you, I well, mean, do you you just meeting people along the way and kind of bringing people in, or no, no. This I mean, this was a big shakeup. Like uh, Scott and Jay have been in the band since the late nineties, so mm. um, they got to that yeah. point where touring wasn't in their blood anymore, and I respect that. And so you know, we didn't we searched around and found two people that we knew and knew that they wanted to be in the band and wanted to to tour. Um, which was a big one and they're they're a little bit younger and um and they're pretty amped on everything they both of them have some touring under their belts and um and have been you know part of our calgary music scene for quite some time ryan used to live here actually um so yeah they're all pretty amped on you know in some of these places a lot of these places are places they've never been so you know everyone's really excited about kind of getting going here and um but it was a big shake up it took a long time to you know to replace uh, two founding, well, almost founding members. So, um, you know, it wasn't just something that was, it was, you know, definitely some gut checks, like, can we do this going forward? But, you know, we, Casey and I really wanted to, we still have a lot of gas in the tank, so to speak. And, um, um, these guys fit in perfectly. They're the right people for the band. And, and I think as we start to tour and they get to meet the fans and, and I think people will see that too, that they're really, uh, they're really great. Cool. Cool. Um, 
also, like more importantly than the records, um, on Friday, you got, you got beer coming out. Is that right? I yeah. Read that somewhere? We, that's we got exciting. beer and we got coffee. No, you can't. That's a problem. Like we, we, I work for a brewery just south of Calgary here. So we did a little limited run, but unfortunately just due to liquor laws, we, we can't actually sell outside of Alberta. Actually. I thought we could maybe oh, get some okay. other places in Canada, but it's mostly just in Alberta. And we just came out with a coffee from Anarchy Roasters in Kelowna, BC, and we can ship that in Canada, but just in Canada. Cause again, just, oh, okay. you know, laws and things that I don't really want to stick my nose in. So they tell me we can do this. We can't do that. And I'm like, cool. So only our Canadian listeners can, yeah. Uh, yeah. You have to pack your suitcase with a few when you when you get over here touring in, in the UK. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I, it's fun. Like, I mean, again, it's just we're not putting a lot of, into this. It's just more like you know we got to do something, and we wanted you know we probably wouldn't normally have the time to do all this, but um, I just wanted to do as much fun stuff as we could, just because yeah. we could. Talking of fun stuff, you did something with. Um... Uh, the punk uh, punk rock factory guys in Wales, right? How did yeah, that come yeah. How did that come about? Did they just reach out to you? Or? Yeah, we've been in touch a, a little bit there. Um, I saw them do um, I saw them do a song with Rody from Protest the Hero, and uh, it was a it was a meatloaf cover, and I just thought it was hilarious. And I wrote them. I was like, I want to do one of these things. This this sounds fun. Okay. And so they said. So we were actually kicking around lots of ideas. We were like talking about should I do an Enrique Iglesias should I do Sia which would have probably <laughs> ruined my voice but it's amazing but uh, ultimately they said you know hey why don't we we're doing this Disney um, album you should come and do a song and so I picked a Moana song pretty early on and then right. I found out that Rody was doing the other Moana song and and some of the other people on the record as well and uh, Dennis from 10 foot pole and and um it was it was super fun and and uh, and cut, you know it's neat because it kind of reaches a whole new audience you know parents with kids and yeah, yeah they probably won't like the rest of the stuff I do but at least they got the rest of that song. <laughs> yeah <laughs> they've got they've built up quite a big kind of cult following haven't they like yeah I, I don't, yeah, don't quite yeah it's been neat to, it's been neat to watch and they're real sweet guys and they're they're um, fans of the band and, and it was super cool to uh, to do this with them nice. So, um, just going back to the record, is there any um, any standouts for you? I mean, what what are your kind of favorite songs from um, from that from that record? Well, you probably seen four singles come out, so that's not yep. by accident. <laughs> ah, okay, got you. Got I you. like I like Elephant March a lot. I like uh, Good Grief Retreat. Chromatic is a great one. There's one a song. Num- uh, I think it's the third one called The Ides, which I really like. Camera Obscura okay. is one. Um, yeah, I like a lot of this record. It's 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 fun. I'm I'm excited about all of it, and and I hope that uh, that people dig it. So, um, uh, yeah, I, I yeah, I'm I'm pumped to see what people think, and um, but I feel good about it. You know, like I feel like mm-hmm. um, it's where this band should be, and uh, and I'm glad that 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 it came out the way it did. Cool. Well, um, yeah. Thanks for giving us your time. Anyway, uh, Steve will hopefully. Hopefully see see you on the road at some point in the UK when um when you yeah when, definitely when you well thanks for having me Chris and Nick I appreciate it. it's uh, it's good to talk to you guys I, I hope of course, uh, man. we'll get to, I, I hope we'll get to uh, do this over a pint sometime soon I'd love definitely, that man. I'd love that man yeah. yeah yeah cool well good luck with the new record dude and um, yeah hopefully catch you soon yeah thanks guys have a great day thank you thank you for listening. If you liked what you heard, we'd love it if you could subscribe to us uh, wherever you get your podcast, whether that's iTunes or Spotify or Stitcher or any, anywhere like that. Um, also, check us out on social media. If, if you just search for Wasting Time Podcast on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, give us a like or a follow on any of those. And also, we love hearing from listeners as well. So uh, feel free anytime to drop us an email at the Wasting Time Podcast at gmail.com. Or obviously you can message us on social media as well. But um, yeah, we'll catch you next time. For you to arrive,